Hey guys, Raman here with Team Legit, and today we're going to be becoming a $240 plug and play quadcopter. It is the Emax Nighthawk 200. So, to quickly cover the quad, I'll just do a really quick rundown. It has all Emax parts. We have these Emax Red Bottom 2300 kV motors. These are the old series ones, not the new releases ones with the little reef on top. It has a HS1177 camera with some generic lens. Nothing special, but nothing bad at all. It has an Emax Skyline 32 F3 flight controller with an OSD, I believe, but the OSD is not active out of the box. It has a switchable 25 and 200 milliwatt VTX, and it also has an array of LEDs on the bottom. I'll go ahead and quickly plug the quad in so you could go ahead and see what those LEDs look like. It also features a polycarbonate bottom plate plastic thing, that giant yellow thing on the bottom. It's for protection, especially because this, this quadcopter is marketed to new people. And it's also just to keep everything stiff and together, given that this quad only has one single plate of carbon fiber holding it together. Now, as the name suggests, this is a 200 millimeter quad, which is really small for one of these bind and fly sort of things. And I did say bind and fly. What I meant to say was plug and play. You are going to have to include some things. Let me go ahead and cover what comes in the box and what you'll need to provide to get this thing flying. So the first thing you get in the box is the box itself. It's actually a nice little soft case that you get included with the price for $240. you am going to take out the quad. comes with this little foam bottom plate protector thing. It's a, it's a little, it's like a cheap foam on this side, but then it's coated with something nice and thick. So that means if you just keep putting stuff inside and outside, it won't get chewed up. It includes an antenna for the VTX, which I already have mounted to the quad. And it also comes with an instruction manual and a little OSD programmer or a camera uh, adjuster programmer sort of thing. I'm not 100% sure what this little joystick does, but it does plug into the camera. So this quadcopter is a plug-and-play quadcopter, and that means the first thing you're going to need is a receiver. This right here is the FR Sky XM Plus. I think this is a really good receiver for, uh, for getting you started with this sort of thing. It's a... Uh, it's really, really small. It's also really inexpensive. I think this thing's less than $20, could even be less than $15, and it's still a full-range FR Sky receiver. It also solders directly into the flight controller, or ready to the three wires there. I'll cover that later in the video. The other thing you're going to need are a pair of goggles. You're not going to need these. You can fly at line of sight if you just want to get started, but goggles are the ultimate experience, and that's sort of the whole point of getting a quad like this. The next thing you're going to need is a transmitter. This is the FR Sky Tyrannus. If you are doing this on a budget, what I'd skimp out on, and not it's not really that bad actually, considering it's such a close comparison, is I'd get the Tyrannix Q7 Plus or Q7 Plus or something like that. You guys know what I'm talking about. But um, that transmitter is definitely going to be one of your best deals for this sort of quad. This, if you already have a Tyrannus, these are one of the, these were the most popular one up until recently. I think that's gonna start changing, it's gonna start shifting to that. This one's about two hundred dollars. The Q7 is about $120. So that price difference, it's almost the exact same features. You're not really gonna notice any of the difference as a beginner. They're gonna be almost identical. And the final thing you'll need is some way to power the quad. I'm just going to be using a 1500 battery. Given this quad is not exactly going to be the fastest quad in the world, it's still going to be really fast, but I'm just going to use a slightly bigger battery, so I'll be able to uh, get a little bit longer flight time. This one here is an ADC discharge, which is on the high side. I'll just see what it's like. Let's go ahead and take the quad apart, and let's see what's on the inside. All right, now I've got all the screws out. It's a bit tricky here getting the rest out. We'll go ahead and unplug the camera right here. So quickly looking at the camera, it is an HS1177 camera with just some sort of generic lens. It's kind of actually a weird shape. It's a little bit longer and there's no marking on the back, which is a weird sign if you're used to getting these cameras. So the next part to taking it apart is getting off this plastic cover here. And it took me a while to figure it out, but it is just a really tight fit inside the quad. So first thing we'll notice is that there is a LED connecting and tethering it to there. And we can go ahead and see all the electronics. This is the bottom side of the quad, but this is the top side of the flight controller. It's actually mounted upside down. 
There's an X-shaped PDB giving the power distribution. It looks like all of the ESCs are the Emacs 25 amp ESCs, and it does actually have bullet connectors, which is a interesting sight to see on something like this. The LEDs have a plug-in right here to the PDB, and the flight controller looks like everything else is plugged in directly to it and soldered down. The VTX up here is a generic. It says 48 channels, and it uh, looks like it's taking 12 volt in, and it's outputting 12 volts to the camera. Before I put the quad back together, there's one more thing I want to do. I'm sure you guys are familiar with FR Sky or Free Sky or First Ski, whatever you want to call it. You guys know what I'm talking about. Recently, they released a new radio, which would be perfect for this. And I do think if you have a chance to get one of those Q7s, I know we just recently went out of stock on them, but if you get a chance to nab one of those and get one of these receivers, that'd be a perfect combo for one of these quads. All right, so now I'm going to go and show you how to actually install this onto this quad. So soldering this together is actually really, really easy. All it involves is soldering these three wires to these three holes. Now we're going to tin all these three contact points. If you ever end up with a little mountain like I just did here, An easy way to get an easy way to get rid of it is just take your soldering iron, clean it off, and just flick it off. The heat from the soldering iron is hot enough that just a quick little touch to the glob of solder, and I'll just shoot off. Make sure you just don't flick it onto anything important. So the manual indicates the top square pin as the S bus pin, the middle pin as the five volt positive pin, and the bottom pin as the ground pin. That corresponds to yellow, red, black, going top to bottom. So we're gonna go ahead and quickly just solder on all of those. All right, and now we're gonna just go ahead and solder everything together. Okay. Now let's go ahead and make sure to heat shrink the receiver with the included heat shrink. All right, so now my receiver is ready to go. I'm gonna go ahead and bind it and then we can open this up on my favorite part of this quad is that it actually comes with beta flight installed, not clean flight, which I'm so used to. All right, let's see if it connects on the first try. All right, there we go, we're inside. Ignore that weird graphic. Don't actually know why that happens. It works and all. it's all that matters. Now the FR Sky receiver that I chose if wired properly, and I'm not sure if I did it, it should be able to be powered through the flight controller. But uh, I doubt that it is. I'm just going to go ahead and plug in a battery just in case. Okay, so we'll just go ahead and jump right to the receiver tab. We shouldn't actually see any signal, but well, that was remarkably easy. It's already set up for S bus. All right, so I just went out here and changed it here. Normally, if that doesn't work, what you do, you go to configuration and you make sure that this is set up for the right uh, receiver. Uh, the other one I opened up, interestingly enough, was not actually set up for S bus. We had to go ahead and change it. All you would do there is just change this to serial based receiver, select S bus. And if you're doing it for spectrum, you choose serial and select spectrum uh, 2048. After that, then you'd go to your receiver, make sure everything's connected and working. If it's still not working, you can check the ports, make sure that your serial RX port is turned on. And that's usually all the troubleshooting you have to do when connecting a quadcopter. So we have our aux channel already set up. Let's go ahead and make that our arm. And it's on aux one. And we'll also go ahead and throw on air mode there. That's just what my traditional do for every quad is. All right. So that's it. Let's go ahead and make sure all the motors work. Well, the motors work. So that's it for clean flight. That was pretty easy. Uh, I'm sure they pre-calibrated this quad, so I'm not even going to worry about that. That's part of the fun of working with pre-tuned quads is you don't actually have to go through a lot of steps when setting them up. I'll go ahead and see what their stock PIDs are before I do anything. I'll do a flight video next. But, uh, motor's armed. 
Oh yeah, this thing is working pretty well. All right, so that's it guys. That's this whole review. Please leave me some feedback on anything you'd like to see more, or any changes that you'd like to see made. Also what you'd like to see in the next review and any questions you have, I'll do my best to answer. Other than that, it's Ramen here with Team Legit and we'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.